Hawaii Kako, thank you for joining us today, March 30th, 2022, here for our midweek Bishop Memorial Chapel service. We're so excited to have everyone back here on campus uh, and back in our classrooms. In the Bible, one of the Ten Commandments is to honor the Sabbath. Uh, and we pray that the two weeks of spring break was indeed a Sabbath for all of you that allowed you to rest and to recuperate from all that went on in third quarter getting yourself through classes, getting yourself ready for a song contest. What a beautiful occasion. Ho'omaikai to the senior class again. Uh, but thank you for being here. We're excited to bring you this message of aloha that we have prepared uh, for you to receive in your hearts and in your minds and in your souls. Mahalo nui for joining us this week. Our call to worship comes to us from the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Jesus answered, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer, Kapuleakahaku. E koma ko makua i loko o kalani. E ho ano ia ko inoa. E hiki mai ko au puni. E malama ia ko make make makaho nua nei. E like me ia i malama ia makalani la. E ha avi mai ama ko i ke ia la i aina mako no nei la. E kalamai ho i ama ko i kama ko lave hala ana. Me ma ko e kalanei i kapoe i lave hala i kama ko. Mai ho uku o e ama ko i ka ho vale vale i amai. E ho o pakele no na e ama ko i ka ino. No ka mea, no ke au puni. A me ka mana. A me ka ho nani ia a mao lo aku. Amene. Aloha mai kako. Let's worship the Lord together. Eke aku anani kamaha o na unoi hana kaho nuane me na hoku kau ila kahe kili ho ike ana iko mana. Consider all the worlds thy hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. No. 
In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 38, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. I just want to encourage you that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. You gave your life for mine Nailed to the cross Crucified And all my sin and shame it was washed by your mercy You are the treasure I find My reason for live So I let my life Become an offering To the one who is worthy All praise most high all praise to the one who saved my life all praise to Jesus Christ high king of heaven my king forever Storm the gates of my heart The veil in between Was torn apart Now you hold the keys to the grave Cause you bring things to life you Roll stones away All praise to the Lord most high All praise to the one who saved my life of heaven my king forever mm -hmm. I lift my hands up lay my whole life down my whole life down before you I lift my hands up lay my whole life down my whole life now is for you I lift my hands up lay my whole life down my whole life down for you I lift my hands up lay my whole life down my whole life down is for you scripture reading comes to us from the book of Genesis, chapter 33, verse 4. 
But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And they wept. Thus ends the reading. Aloha my kaku. I'll buy you a diamond ring, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. I'll get you anything, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. Because I don't care too much for money, for money can't buy me love. These are the fantastic and memorable words of pop culture, love philosophers, and the best band to have ever lived, the Beatles. Money cannot buy you love, but one Sunday in Sunday school class, a little child had other ideas about what indeed money might be able to buy her. One Sunday, a minister joins some of the children in Sunday school class, and as he sits with them, he begins to tell them about things that money cannot buy. Money cannot buy love. Money cannot buy laughter. Money cannot buy joy. And he just goes through this endless list. And finally, because he's trying to get them to understand exactly what love is, he decides to pose a question for them. But rather than asking them about something that money will be able to buy for them, he poses this question about something that love might compel them not to do. And he asked them, if I gave you $20, would you be able not to love your parents? And at first the children are a bit startled as they kind of sit in the room and they look around at each other. What is the pastor saying? What is he asking? Soon enough though, there's a hand in the back of the room that gets raised and the pastor sees it and he calls on the, the child and he says, do you have something that you would like to say? And this little girl from the back row calls out and she says, pastor, I don't want to not love my parents, but how much money would you give me not to love my sister? Siblings, those of us who are blessed with them know the perils of being a brother or a sister. They can be your best friend one day and they can be your compadre in your fight against your parents. The next day though, they could be the squirrel that rats you out to said parental forces. No matter what happens though, deep down inside, we know we love our siblings and there is not any amount of money in the world we could be paid to force us not to love our siblings because that sort of sibling love is priceless. This morning, as we begin our quarter four chapel series, we continue to focus on our theme for this year, Ua Ola Loko Ike Aloha, Love Gives Life Within. And the specific ways we stress how we give love to each other is through our core Christian values here at Kamehameha Schools. Aloha imi na oao, malama ike pono kulana, oh, kuleana, excuse me, ho'omao and ha'aha'a. We will circle around to these values again, just as we did in quarter three. But this time, instead of focusing in on gospel stories, we're going to look at some Old Testament heroes and some Old Testament figures and try to pick out exactly what they teach us about how we love each other through each of these values expressed through our mission statement here at the school. Today, we begin by looking at a man named Jacob. In the book of Genesis, beginning in chapter 25, continuing through the rest of the entirety of the book of Genesis, it tells the story about Jacob and his descendants. Jacob has this twin brother. Uh, his twin brother is named Esau. And from the start of their lives, Jacob and Esau's relationship is filled with tension. Do you have a family member who loves drama? Think about it for a second or two. As you try to think about what is it about this person, why do they love drama so much? We all have these people though. We all have that one person in our family that always seems to be arguing and fighting with everyone in the family. We all have that one person in our family that's always grumbling about auntie so-and-so, uncle so-and-so, grumbling about grandma or grandpa. It always seems like this person, they just need to be all up in everybody's business and they need to be about doing things because having a sense of peace and calmness in their life just isn't the way that they roll. When Jacob's family, Jacob is this person. Jacob is this person that seems to always attract drama. Sometimes the drama 
is caused by his own actions. Sometimes the drama is caused through the actions of things that other people do to him. And it starts from the very beginning, right at his birth in Genesis chapter 25 to 26. Jacob and Esau are twins. Esau is the oldest. And so when Esau comes out of their mother's womb, the story goes that uh, Jacob quickly follows his brother. But as he's following his brothers out, it says that he snatches onto the heel of his brother. And Jacob, the name Jacob actually means heel snatcher or heel catcher. And it comes from this story of how Jacob came out in the womb and so he's always grabbing and tugging at his brother and doing things that are unbecoming of what a brother should do to someone else and they go through the entirety of their life and of being in this tension and the apex of their tension comes when their dad Isaac is their father um, he decides, as is tradition, that he wants to give his oldest son a blessing. And so in this case, it's Esau that should be the rightful recipient of Isaac's blessing. But at this point in time in Isaac's life, Isaac is a lot older, and he started to lose some of his eyesight. And so one of the ways the Bible tells us that he was able to tell the difference between his two sons when he could no longer see is Esau, which actually means red and to be of coarse skin because when Esau came out it says that he was full and he was really red as a baby but Esau being red and being of coarse skin was a lot hairier than Jacob it, it sounds weird but that's what the Bible says and so one of the ways that Isaac would tell them apart is Isaac would rub their hands um, and he would be able to tell through, by the hair on their forearm which son he was talking to. Well, Jacob decides to deceive his dad and he puts on uh, these hair skins on his forearms to pretend to be his brother and he receives a blessing from his father that was never intended to be his blessing. And once Esau finds out what his brother did to him, Esau is furious. Esau is so furious, in fact, in Genesis 27, verses 41 to 43. It says that Esau was furious to the point of wanting to kill his brother. Jacob, out of fear of what his brother wants to do to him, decides that he's going to run away, and he runs away for a good period of time. But eventually, Jacob gets to a point where he realizes that he has to go back home. He has nowhere else to go. Uh, but in the meantime, he's accumulated all this wealth. He has all these people that are under his command, he has a family, uh, children galore. He has a, a whole bunch of children that all belong to him as well as a bunch of livestock. And so he gets everything together and he decides that I'm going to go home. And in Genesis 32 and 33, we begin to see that Jacob begins putting all his possessions together. Because in his mind, the last time he saw his brother, his brother was incredibly upset and rightfully upset at him for what Jacob had done to Esau. And so being filled with worry and being filled with concern, Jacob decides, I'm going to try to buy my brother's love. You know, I'm going to go there and I'm going to present to him all of these things that I've accumulated and all this wealth that I have to earn his favor. And eventually in Genesis chapter 33, verse 3, when the brothers meet face to face, it says that Jacob, who was riding on the back of an animal, jumps down to the ground and he bows to his brother seven times as a show of contrition to his brothers to ask for forgiveness for what he had done to Esau. But Esau shows us exactly what love looks like, being heartbroken over having a blessing stolen, being heartbroken over having a blessing stolen by someone that he maybe even considered to be his best friend. When Esau sees Jacob, it says in scripture, then Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. Over time, the hurt and pain of what Jacob had done had dissipated and over time, love wins out for Esau. It was not e easy for Esau to do this, but he found the strength to do it. It was love that pushed Jacob to seek forgiveness 
It was love that gave Esau the strength to forgive. Where do we find the strength to display this type of love for one another? These are the words of Jacob in Genesis chapter 33. He said, please take my gift, which has been brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me. Where do we find the strength to ask someone for forgiveness when we have done wrong to them? We think about the grace that God has had for us. Where do we find the strength to love those who have wronged us in hurtful, painful, deeply inflicting ways? We think about the grace that God so graciously gives to all of us, even in spite of the fact that we may not deserve the grace of God. In our lives, we have people who push us to the limits all the time in the same way that Jacob always was pushing Esau's button. We have those people that just drive us crazy. It might be a classmate. It might be a boyfriend or a girlfriend, a teacher, a sibling, a parent, a boss for those of you that have a job. It might even be a coach for those of you who participate in sports. It can be a lot of different people in our lives who drive us bananas in the same way that Jacob drove Esau bananas. But at some point in time, both of them understood that God's grace, because we all without a shadow of a doubt, drive God bananas as well. But God was gracious enough to forgive us. And that grace that Esau has for his brother is an example of what it looks like for us as we become ambassadors of Aloha and as we set out to love one another. What it looks like for us to love one another is to love one another in the same way that Esau Love Jacob, even after all that had happened. I pray this week as we endeavor to be ambassadors of Aloha, that we can love the person who is sometimes difficult to love, and that we find time to tell others of how gracious God has been to us, and how God has expressed Aloha for all of us in his grace. May God's word and God's hope and God's love be with you all throughout this week. Amen. up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down is for you. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. my King forever. My King forever. My King forever. Thank you all for watching this week's chapel service. One of the things here that we've been wrestling with as a chapel staff is we appreciate that everyone is watching, uh, everyone that watches. We, we love that you guys are taking time out of your schedule 
to watch the services that we provide here. But one of the next steps that we are aiming to meet is how do we get you guys to interact more? How do we um, get the lessons to be a thing that you can think and ponder upon more? And so this week, we're going to create a Padlet that you can just drop a message in. The questions will be centered around this idea of sibling love and sharing some of your sibling stories. And maybe next week, we'll share some of the best ones that come through. Don't forget, we also have our student survey for those of you in need of prayer. Uh, have any questions about the Bible, want to be part of a Bible study, you guys can fill out the student survey. The link will also be provided in our description of our videos. Uh, but again, mahalo. Thank you all for being here this week. Uh, we pray that uh, once you receive the benediction, which is coming in a bit, that you have a fantastic week. Reach out to us if you need any prayer, any listening ear, whatever it is. We are here to service all of you. Mahalo nui loa. Let us receive our benediction this morning. Hear our prayers of good words. Na Yehova oe e ho'o mai ka i mai a e mālama mai. Na Yehova e kau mai i ka mālama lama o kona maka maluna i ho'o a e loko mai ka i mai a oe. Na Yehova e maliu mai a oe a e haavi mai i maluno. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. E pule kako. Gracious God, we pray that as we go about this week, Lord, attempting to love each other in the same way that Jacob and Esau eventually grew to understand what it meant to love one another. Lord, may you help us to be better at that task, Lord. Lord, also keep at the forefront a remembrance of your grace for us. Be with us throughout this week as we continue to do the best that we can be or to do the best that we can do at living out your call, which is to love you first and then to love one another. Help us to love one another. Makainoa o kahaku yesu. Amen.